All right. Well, by now you should have seen a couple of introductory videos, one about introduction to the course, one about introduction to the Canvas page, maybe one about the introduction to Proctorio. And I want to emphasize that for 151, <clears throat> for physiology, studying and mastering the material is just different. It is nearly impossible for anyone to memorize physiology, right? Not all learning is memorizing. And starting now, you should think of this class, for those of you who are interested in PA school or nursing programs, this is your first class in those medical programs. Um, this is the one that everything's gonna be based on. So now is a good time for you to learn how to master this type of material. So I wanna emphasize that if you're studying just to remember it for the exam, you're going to forget it. And maybe so far in your education, it hasn't mattered, right? I'll tell you honestly that in your future medical education, you may never need to know the names of all the bones of the carpus. You might not, but you're gonna to need to know this because this, this physiology, that's what medicine is based on. Right? And you can do this. Here's how I know. How many of those words do you remember from that previous lecture? Remember there were words? How many do you remember? Go ahead, give us some thought. Uh, there was something about a fish, a grandfather, a church, a kite, and the color red. If you got all five of them, you weren't even studying those. Why do you still remember them? because stories, the human mind loves patterns and it loves stories. You need to get rid of the idea of memorizing this stuff and throw yourself into making what we're talking about, vivid stories in your brain, and then it'll be available to you so that you can master your nursing program and not be one of the, in a lot of nursing programs, 25% of the students drop out or are uh, drop out or fail out of the program. You don't want to be one of those, okay? So we're going to be reviewing chemistry pretty quickly because you should already know chemistry from 150, right? Why do we study chemistry when we're talking about physiology? Because ultimately, life is a matter of chemistry. Yeah, it just is. Life is chemistry. Um, Let's imagine you're listening to me and you get a headache and you're like, oh, I'm going to go get a Tylenol because I've got a headache. Why does it make your headache go away? It makes your headache go away because Tylenol is a molecule that gets dissolved in the human body and those molecules get carried through the bloodstream and they end up getting carried to your brain where that molecule will interact with another molecule on the surface of your brain cells. And that interaction is what makes your headache go away. Chemistry. So the kind of chemistry you need to know is not like hard chemistry. It's the kind of chemistry you learned probably in fifth grade, sixth grade, um, the chemistry biologists think about. We're going to start with atoms. And you should know that atoms are the smallest smallest units of matter that retain the properties of an element. Well, what is an element? Uh, elements are those things on the periodic table. I've got one in a second. Um, elements are substances like oxygen or iron or gold or sodium, okay? Uh, those, those are uh, elements. Um, elements, by the way, are substances that have atoms that all have the same structure. So kind of a circular definition there, but there's a good reason. Atoms and the organization of atoms and how each atom is created will dictate how that particular element will interact with the rest of the world. So you need to know the subatomic particles, the protons, neutrons, and electrons. You need to know these guys. Laser pointer, okay. Yeah, so protons, neutrons, and electrons. 
one of the things you need to know is which of these guys are in the nucleus and which are not. The nucleus, this word nucleus, I think it's Greek, that it means the center of something. So the center of this tiny thing called an atom um, is called a nucleus. Later on, uh, you've, all, you've already learned uh, the structure of a cell. Uh, the center of a cell is also called a nucleus because um, it means center. Uh, but the nucleus of an atom, atoms are way too small to be seen with even the most powerful light microscope. They are minuscule, uh, beyond minuscule, sub-sub microscopic, okay? And what are in the nucleus? Neutrons and protons are in the nucleus. And what is not in the nucleus? The electron is not in the nucleus. Oh, I forgot I'm supposed to be timing these things. All right. Um, so protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. What's not? The electrons. Now, the electrons, for our biology way of thinking about things, we're going to be thinking about them almost like planets orbiting the sun kind of a thing. Do electrons do that? No. No. But that's how we're going to be thinking about them for our purposes. Something else you should know for exam one is that protons are positively charged. Protons are positively charged. That means if I have got one proton, I have got one positive charge. So one, one proton, if I got one proton, it is equal to plus one, okay? Electrons are negatively charged. If I have one electron, it is equal to minus one, right? Neutrons have no charge. So when we're thinking about the charge, the electric or kind of magnetic nature of individuals, atoms and molecules, we don't think about neutrons. Neutrons are important for something else, just not for charge. So make sure you know that protons are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged, and neutrons are neutral. All atoms have protons in their nucleus. Almost all of them have neutrons there. I think hydrogen's really probably the only exception um, to that. Um, and electrons are orbiting around the outside, right? So atoms and elements. Atoms are the smallest unit of matter that retain the property of an element. They are made out of subatomic particles. The subatomic particles, oddly, are interchangeable. So uh, a, a subatomic particle that's inside of a, a that is inside of a sodium today, uh, in two minutes from now, it could be inside of a chloride, okay? They're, they're completely interchangeable. But the way they're arranged it was what makes it so that the element that is created has got the properties it has. For example, at room temperature here on planet Earth, oxygen is a gas, but lead is a metal, and carbon is a black powder. The reason they behave in these ways is because the organization of those subatomic particles in the structure of their atoms. I want you to know this. I want you to know what the atomic number is. The atomic number is the same as the number of protons. So if I tell, ask you on an exam, I've got an element, I've got an atom here, and it has an atomic number of five. How many protons does it have in its nucleus? The answer is five. Okay, not a trick question. And then you need to know the mass number. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Let me give you an example. Carbon has got an atomic number of six, okay? Carbon has an atomic number of six. How many protons does it have? Well, it has six, right? Now, the most common version of the element carbon on planet Earth is called carbon-12. Right? And carbon 12 has got the mass number of 12. And that means that the typical carbon on planet Earth has got six protons and six neutrons because they add up to 12, carbon 12, right? However, there are other versions of carbon on planet Earth called carbon 13 and carbon 14. And you probably heard about carbon 13, it's pretty famous. It's one of the ways that we will um, date the age of things in fossils and stuff like that. Carbon-13 is called carbon-13 because carbon-13 has six protons and seven, eh, seven neutrons, 
right? So mass number, protons plus neutrons. Right. Here we've got a periodic table. This is a very simplified periodic table. It doesn't have all kinds of numbers on it. Please don't memorize the entire periodic table. Uh, I, I haven't. Okay. Maybe I should. I just haven't. All right. Um, so you don't have to know that. You don't have to know that the atomic number for carbon is six. I don't need you to know that. There are some things I do need you to know, however, okay? I need you to know the symbols for the 12 elements that are most essential for life on planet Earth. Human life, yes, but all life on planet Earth. Now, what are the symbols, the chemical symbols? You know, they, they call this abbreviation here, they call it the symbol. I don't know. When I hear a symbol, I expect it to be, I don't know, a star or that thing that the artist formerly known as Prince used to use as his name. But it's not. A chemical symbol is actually just an abbreviation, right? And I need you to know these abbreviations. Why? Because in the future, I am going to be writing things and your textbook will have things that say something like HCL or I will say H2O2, oh, that's supposed to be an O, and it turns into H2O and O2, okay? And I am going to write that because that is the right way to write things when we're talking about molecules, but you won't understand what that means unless you've already memorized the symbols for the 12 elements that are most critical to human life. Let's start with this easy six, okay? The easy six are oxygen, and it's the letter O. <laughs> That's really not good. Uh, carbon is the letter C. There you go. Oxygen, carbon. Hydrogen, it's the letter H. Nitrogen, it's the letter N. Uh, phosphorus, it's the letter P. And sulfur, it's the letter S. Right? Those are really good, right? Uh, that's what you would do. If you were going to do the abbreviations for chemicals, you would start off with making it just the first letter. Okay, these are the six easy ones. Now, the next three, they're pretty easy, calcium, chlorine, and magnesium. Clearly, the letter C got used. And since the letter C got used, we needed a different abbreve for calcium. And calcium is Ca. And chlorine is Cl, right? That's simple. Now, magnesium, for reasons I do not understand, is MG, okay? Not that that's a bad abbreviation. I like that abbreviation very much. It's just that there is no element that uses just the letter M. So it just seems like they should have used the letter M, but they didn't, okay? So calcium, chlorine, magnesium. These are the weird ones. Now, uh, even though these are the weird ones, in a way, these are the most important ones because particularly for those of you who are going on to uh, a medical program, understanding potassium and sodium is so critical for managing uh, the human health. Uh, for those of you who are interested in becoming nurses, we will give potassium and sodium through IV fluids in order to keep them at a normal level in the human body. And the fastest way to kill someone is to have abnormal levels of potassium. Right? So, potassium, sodium, and iron. Oh, uh, what are their abbreviations? Well, for potassium, it's the letter K. Yeah, it has to do with, I don't know, the Greek or the Roman word for this element, potassium. So, potassium is the letter K. Oop. And for sodium, it's the letter NA. NA, the letters NA. As we go through the program, um, at a certain point, you will learn about something called hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia. And hyperkalemia sounds like, oh, that sounds really sciencey. But you will learn that the prefix hyper always means too much. The suffix emia refers to the blood, and K refers to potassium. So hyperkalemia, right there in the word, 
too much potassium in the blood. But you'll know, you'll notice it's not called hyperpotassiumemia. Oh, that's kind of hard to say, but fun. Hyperkalemia. By the way, too much sodium, hypernatremia. Oh, not enough sodium in the blood, a little more common in humans than the opposite, is called hy oops, hyponatremia. Hypo, not enough in the blood. What? Sodium. All right, and then iron. Iron is Fe. And iron is critical to making the hemoglobin that carries oxygen uh, in your blood. All righty. I heard oxygen and magnesium are dating, and I was like, OMG. See, because O for oxygen, MG for magnesium. Yeah, nerd humor. All righty. That's it. We will pick up here at the beginning of the next lecture, next video.